picture of Rohe Ruka made a video recently, which she titled, Why is Ruka so racist? Now, firstly, I want to say I don't think she is racist. I think she's young and maybe naive, but not actually a racist. However, in her video, she does say this unfortunate thing. I'm not obsessed with eugenics. In fact, eugenics as a uh, mandated social policy didn't work in the past. That doesn't mean it can't work in the future, but some aspects of it aren't backed up by science, and some are. Um, in fact, there is a correlation between race and IQ and temperament, among other things. Um, I'm not obsessed with race. I just felt like talking about it this week because I don't want to talk about religion. I commented on her video and was directed to another video. For example, one of his studies now has to do with the link between maternal IQ and infant death rates among gypsies in Serbia. He's also working on the heritability of personality intelligence among South Korean twins. In his spare time, if he ever has any, uh, he's working on a book that covers the last 150 years of race research and behavioral genetics research. He really is uh, one of the great psychology researchers of our time, and it's a great pleasure and honor to have him speak with us today, and he will speak on the question of the heritability of world IQ differences. So please welcome Phil Ruff. Now this guy's racist. Um, the standardized IQ is, if, if you look at Eurasia, from England all the way through Western Europe out to Siberia and uh, out of Mongolia, the average IQ is 100. And what that means is, in effect, um, the general intelligence or cognitive ability of a 16-year-old. Uh, so that is like the standard benchmark against which everything else is calibrated. I just take my word for it that the average is 100, standardized on Europe, and everything else is relative to that. And so then I'll take your attention to sub-Saharan Africa. There, the average IQ is 70. And in the Western world, we often think of an IQ of 70 as being borderline mentally retarded. Uh, but that's not an, a really useful way of looking at sub-Saharan African IQ. Africans are not borderline retarded. It's much better to look at them as having a mental age relative to the 16-year-olds of Europe of about 11-year-olds. And of course, an 11-year-old is not mentally retarded. An 11-year-old can do, cognitively speaking, all kinds of things. Uh, they can uh, work in factories and under supervision at pretty high technical levels in factories. They can work in the fields. Obviously, they can make war, houses, and so on. Um, if I take your attention now to the yellow part of the map, which is China, Japan, these are, these are East Asians. And it comes as a surprise to some people to learn that East Asians actually have a slightly higher IQ than do Europeans. I should also mention, I suppose, that black Americans, African Americans, have an IQ of 85, which is midway between the sub-Saharan African IQ of 70 and the European IQ of 100. Here's the thing. The evidence that there's a correlation between race and IQ is hinky at best. It's more likely that there's a relationship between biased tests and IQ as it relates to race and or that there's a cultural element to IQ testing. IQ is a subjective idea that intelligence has various components such as spatial IQ, emotional IQ, creative IQ, etc. and can be affected by test bias, nutrition, culture, as well as personal genetics and other factors. Consider the IQ is based on a median score being 100, yet nobody has ever tested blacks and set a 100 baseline and separately tested whites and set a 100 baseline. It would be pointless to do this since IQ is supposed to measure human intelligence. But at the same time, considering the cultural differences, it's the only realistic way to do it if race is a factor. IQs are meaningless except to gauge general terms of intelligence. No genetic ideals can or should be drawn. Then there's the issue of genius. Are there geniuses and idiots? Yes, and there are idiot savants. Just because the IQ continuum is said to have genius level, it doesn't mean that everyone with a genius IQ is capable of being an Einstein, a Mozart, a Picasso, and an Oprah. These people are all considered geniuses, but each is a different kind of genius. Yes, race, or more specifically, isolated tribalism, actually implies a genetic aspect to IQ. 
But if you think about it, it also suggests that there is not a racial relationship. The more you isolate a gene pool, the more opportunity for a particular gene of any type to take dominance. If IQ does have a racial component, I suggest it's less related to race and more to isolated tribalism, which would be cultural and geographic, not genetic specifically. Consider that the IQ among whites varies even within a geographic continuum. For example, compare Appalachian whites to Nordic whites. Additionally, there have been studies that demonstrate a correlation between weight and IQ, as well as studies demonstrating a correlation between race and predispositions toward obesity. Since all humans originated from the same geographic starting point, any of a number of factors could have led to any divergence. But to suggest that IQ and race are correlated is to suggest that intelligence shares a genome with melanin, tooth shape, musculature, hair color and texture, facial bone structure, fat distribution, and any other of the arbitrary geographically relative genetic drift cause superficialities associated with race. That all of these diverse characteristics are all linked to the same genome. If we take a group of whites and isolate them, and a group of blacks and isolate them, and a group of Asians and isolate them, all relatively similar in intelligence levels on average, over time and inbreeding, the genes will be largely negatively impacted but it will be impossible to predict which group will be the smartest and which will be the least based solely on race because race is not truly the only factor. What it boils down to is that race is an arbitrary and mostly superficial result within the human species of the genetic dominance of specific, mostly physical outliers over centuries of geographic isolation. But intelligence is a broad description of several talents which can be averaged. But that doesn't change the fact that there is a continuum. Race is a nonsensical descriptor because we're all the same species, Homo sapiens sapiens. Neil deGrasse Tyson is arguably smarter than Michelle Malkin, and Yo-Yo Ma may be a genius on the strings, but George Washington Carver kicks his ass in inventing. There are outliers in all groups, and given time, they could alter the balance so that blacks eventually test better than Asians, yet the Asians would still be Asian and the blacks would still be black. That alone is all the proof we need to dispel the myth that IQ is in any way correlated to race, or that race is even a useful distinction. And we don't even need to perform the experiment. It's self-evident. Thank you.